It's impossible for you to go under for a violation to go undetected. Certainly not for a, a considerable period of time. Period of time. We determined that the best thing for us to, for us to do was basically to take the human being out of the equation. Out of the equation. Out of the equation. By taking the human being out of the equation to a great extent and turning it over to a computer to make your decision. Uh, I guess you could you could also program the computer to, to violate the regulation, <laughs> but we haven't gotten there yet. We haven't gotten there yet. We haven't gotten there yet. How do you hide a multi-billion dollar fraud? Investigators are still trying to figure out what went on inside Bernie Madoff's offices. Bernie compartmentalized the, the firm, it now seems. Um, the, the traders thought that he was uh, doing one thing while he was telling clients of the advisor business he was doing something else. There has not been a single trade for a client for at least 13 years. Clients thought, you know, they got these elaborate statements every month with real prices on them. Physically, there, were, there was a distinction between the two operations. The, the, the trading floor was on a, a separate floor from the advisory business group. Uh, the advisory business group was on the 17th floor. Um, apparently, not everybody had access to it. That was a you know, special um, pass key to get into that part of the office. Um, and then the, the main trading office operations were on 18 and then eventually on 19. He sort of kept the two of them walled off. In fact, he was sort of telling people different things depending on where they were. They're just continuing to, um, you know, to try to figure out who was involved. His brother, Peter, was in charge of compliance for the whole firm. Um, Shannon Madoff was in charge of compliance for, for the trading. Um, we don't know their involvement. They claim to have had no knowledge of this. Peter actually ran the trading operation for many years. Um, Bernie, Bernie stepped back from the trading operation in, in, as far back as the mid-80s. Um, and that was you know, Peter's domain until Bernie's sons, Mark and Andy, took that over in the late 90s. The other folks who were very important to this whole thing were the people who worked in the 17th floor operation. Um, the most important, to, it seems, at this point is Frank DiPascali. Frank uh, was the key person in terms of keeping track of client accounts. There's a, a longtime employee named uh, Annette Bongiorno. Um, she was at, at Madoff for, for many decades. Investigators are also looking at her role. As prosecutors built their case, they began to talk to longtime assistants of Annette Bongiorno a veteran Madoff employee who handled many of the operations inside the firm. Prosecutors say that Madoff hired people who had very little experience in the securities industry. And the government claims that these people generated bogus trading and account statements used in the alleged fraud. Like many con men or accused con men, Madoff may have started out legitimate. And what often happens in Ponzi schemes is the investor who takes other people's money starts out doing something legitimate and either he over promises or he under delivers and at that moment he faces a moral choice which is I can fess up I can tell the truth I can say I messed up or I can cover it up one of the big rules investing in Bertie made up is never talk to him about the market or investments if you saw him at the country club or the golf course. He was like the wizard, and you don't question the wizard. Back in the 1980s and 1990s, commercial banks and investment banks all were on the hunt. They were looking for the big fish, the wealthy people, the ones who had the money that they could manage and through which they could build a relationship. But oftentimes they found they had been beaten to the punch. One man had gotten there first. That man was Bernie Madoff. You look at Goldman Sachs, UBS, J.P. Morgan, private bank. All of these institutions live to market to the wealthy. But Bernie Madoff understood the wealthy. 
better than any of them. And he understood one very important thing, the whole VIP velvet rope phenomenon. He knew that he could sell exclusivity to a certain, extent, to a certain extent, he could sell status, and he was able to take on the lower end the people who weren't so wealthy, or the people who put in all of their life savings with him. So he knew that there was a club, and there is a club, but were all the people who invested with him getting into that club? Probably not. He understood that the wealthy were not looking to get rich off these investments. They were already rich. What they wanted was a steady, reliable income. With plea deal in hand, now the question turns to where the money go. Right now, the working theory is that it's gone. Taken just like Charles Ponzi did from new investors and given to old ones. As thousands of investors clamor to get their money back, it's clear it's gonna take a long time to unravel the Madoff money trail. <laughs>